What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and in today's episode of the fighting game tutorial series, we're going to be going over Fast Fall. So Fast Fall is a mechanic where when you jump, if you reach the apex of your jump and you're holding the down button or press the down button within a given number of frames at that point, or during your falling animation as a whole, you can actually fall a little bit faster and reach the ground sooner. This will allow you to make some other decisions, play some mind games with the opponents. So I will give you an example here what this looks like. So I'm pressing these at relatively the same time, and this is the regular fall. If I am to fast fall, it is what the mute on the left is doing right now. So you see the mute on the left is reaching the ground much faster than the mute on the right. Now I can't just jump and press down and immediately cancel out. I do have to reach the apex of my jump. If I reach the apex of my jump and I press down, I can perform the fast fall or I can be holding down the whole time after I jump and I will also perform the fast fall at the earliest possible time. So that's what we're going to be covering today. If you'd like to get caught up in the series before following this episode, I'll link you to this playlist right here in the top right corner, which is every single episode of the fighting game tutorial. Now this is episode 201, so we're quite far along, but we still have a long way to go feel free to check out all the cool stuff we've done in that playlist. Alternatively, if you just care about the fast fall, I recommend you watch this episode right here, which is where we went over our custom jumping mechanics. So we're going to use and customize a little bit more today to make this a perfect system for us. And with that out of the way, we can go ahead and get started. This is a code and blueprint tutorial series. However, we only need to work in the code today. So let's go into Visual Studio and go to our base character. For me, that is my fighter template character .h. If we go to the fighter template character .h, we want to add some variables to keep track of our fast fall behavior and determine what is and isn't allowed in our game. So in games with fast fall, sometimes not every character can perform them. So we we'll want to make sure that if we have characters that shouldn't perform fast fall and characters that do, we check for that and we actually set that. We also are going to want to determine how fast the fast fall scaling is. So how much of a difference it makes to fast fall. And the last thing we'll need is the ability to determine if we are pressing down or not. We can determine this by figuring out if the player has called the start crouching function and the stop crouching function. However, that will only fire when there has been a press or release. In this case, we also want to support holds. So if you jump and you're holding the down button, we should immediately go into that fast fall when available. And so we will need to determine if the user is currently pressing the down button at any point, not just the press and the release. At this point, we want to scroll down to our variables. So I'm going to scroll all the way down and I'm going to go down to my booleans, which are down toward the bottom. The very first thing I want to add is this boolean right here, can fast fall. And this just determines if the character is able to perform fast fall, just in general. If the character is not able to perform fast fall, this will be false. And then, of course, we just won't allow them to perform anything related to fast fall. That character can't do it. If it is true, we have nothing to worry about for this episode. We'll go into the logic for the fast fall and we'll be good to go. Now, as I said, it is a Boolean called can fast fall, and I have added it as a U property so that we can set it in each individual blueprint child class. And so some characters may not be able to fast fall at all. U property of edit anywhere blueprint read write allows us to change it within the blueprints and then the category allows us to just find it more easily when searching for it or looking in the event graph under the sections. Next, we want to determine if the player is pressing the down button. So I am scrolling up a little bit, but still in my booleans. I had two booleans checking for if the player was pressing forward or backward. So I've gone to that section and I've added a new one is pressing down. All three of them are the same thing. We're just determining if the player is pressing or holding the specific input. So for today's example, we need to have bool is pressing down. Lastly, we need a float value, and that's going to be our scale for how quick the fast fall really is. I've gone up to my default gravity scale since to increase our falling speed, we can increase our gravity. 
and I've made this new variable float fast fall scale. It is again U property edit anywhere blueprint read write so we can edit it in the blueprint and for the category I've given it gravity scale. Now that we have all three of these variables, we can go into the fire template character .cpp and go into the constructor where we set all the default values and let's make sure we set them. So for the first one, I have my fast fall scale and I've set it to default gravity scale times two. So default gravity scale is the gravity scale when the character is created. This is what we always want to reset back to when the character lands out of a combo or when they land on the ground after performing some special jump or move. And so I've decided to just make the fast fall scale double that value, but you could change it to your heart's content. You can make it whatever you want to so make it faster or slower. Just remember doing it like this where I'm using the default gravity scale in this calculation. If I change the default gravity scale, the fast fall scale will change as well. Scrolling down a little bit, we have the is pressing down Boolean. We want to set that to false because when we come in and the character is spawned, we're not automatically pressing down and scrolling down some more. We have our can fast fall and I'm setting this to be true by default in the constructor. So characters can fast fall by default. This basically means that every character in the game will be able to fast fall unless we specifically set them in child code classes or blueprint classes. Now, after setting all these default values, the next thing we want to do is go to our start crouching and stop crouching functions. So here's start crouching. I've changed it a little bit since the last time you saw it. So let me show you. First of all, this commented outline, add input icon to screen is because I moved it to the top of this function. The icons that we're adding to the screen are for the input stack, such as in practice mode and they represent the inputs the player pressed, not the inputs that were able to go through. In this logic before, I had actually put it within this if statement, if can move and combo state was equal to none. So this means if I were to press down and I wasn't able to move, say I was in the middle of a throw, the icon would not display to the screen. I don't think that's correct. So I commented out for this episode, but I'm actually going to remove it and place it here instead. That way, when the press for the crouch occurs, we're going to display that icon to the screen no matter what. Now, there's one other thing I did in here before today's episode, and that is this if statement. So this if statement was previously just checking these two things, if can move and the combo state was equal to none. However, this means we can technically crouch in the air. Well, we don't want to be able to crouch in the air. Now we're going to fast fall when we're in the air. That's still different from crouching in the air. I added three conditions to this if statement that weren't previously here. So and character state is not equal to e character state colon colon e backward jumping. And character state is not equal to neutral jumping and character state is not equal to forward jumping. Basically, as long as the character isn't in the jumping state, we can go into these crouching states. So if we're running, if we're walking and we press down, sure, crouch can override that. However, when we're in the air, it's kind of hard to crouch in the air, so we don't want to be able to do that. These few conditions just makes it so you won't crouch while you're in the air. I've added this right here, is pressing down equals true. And this just allows us to track when down is being pressed by the player. And we can comment this, the player is pressing the down input. We know this anyway because it was added to the buffer, but just being able to check this Boolean and saying, yep, down's being pressed is great and it's gonna come in handy for this fast fall. Now let's scroll down to the stop crouching function right below it. Now in this function, I only changed one thing and that was the if statement. It's the same deal as above. So stop crouching was able to occur if the combo state was equal to none. That's it. What this means is if I was in the air and I released the down button, which is the crouch button in this case, I could actually change the character state in the air. That's not something we want to do. So, and the character state is not equal to backward jumping. The character state is not equal to neutral jumping and the character state is not equal to forward jumping. So we can't really go into the start crouching or stop crouching logic while we're in the air. For a few things, it's okay, such as when adding input icons to the screen and adding them to the buffer. 
but we don't want to do any actual logic related to the crouch itself. After fixing that, the other thing we need to do in this function is to reset is pressing down to be false because stop crouching is called when we release this input and we're releasing the crouch input. So we're no longer pressing down. Like above, I'll go ahead and comment this and say the player has released the down input. Now the start and stop crouching functions are done. We want to go to the tick function. So here's the tick function. You can put this logic pretty much anywhere in here. Just make sure it's not within some other nested if statement it doesn't need to be in. So I put it directly under this stuck in enemy check where we determined if the characters got stuck inside of each other and if they did move them out. And this logic is the logic that's actually going to allow us to perform the fast fall. So we have a few conditions here. This is being checked on tick. So we only care about this if the character can move, the combo state is equal to none, so they're not being juggled, and the character state is equal to neutral jumping. So if they're jumping vertically in the air, they haven't been hit, they haven't been juggled there, we can perform fast fall. You could also add backward and forward jumping if you wanted. That is entirely up to you. I made it so it's only for the neutral jumping state. And there's something else we should really put in here. In fact, it should be the very first thing that we put. If can fast fall. Because if we can't fast fall, we just want to ignore all these other conditions and we just want to ignore everything inside of here and skip below it. Go on to the rest of the logic and tick. But if we can fast fall, if this character is able to do that and we check and we meet all these other requirements, we have to see if it's the right time and the player is performing the right action as well. So what I was doing was checking to see if the character movement's velocity on the z-axis was less than 0.0f. The way the character movement works is that when you jump in the air, it adds forces to the character and the character gains velocity. On the way down, the character loses velocity, if you will, and it's really gaining that negative velocity. So the character is plummeting back toward the ground. The velocity on the character will only ever be negative in the z-axis when we're heading down, so when we're returning from the jump. So if we're in the jumping state and our velocity is negative, or less than 0.0f, we can assume that they have passed the apex of the jump, thus we are able to perform the fast fall. If you want to check this and you're having issues getting your fast fall to work, you can add this if statement and just leave it like this put the ending parenthesis on here and add this login. If you have this login, it should print while the character is falling after they reach the apex of the jump. The apex of the jump is the highest point of the jump. If this doesn't print in the log at this point, then you know that you have some sort of issue in your logic because it should be. Now, this isn't really helpful here because I have since added this is pressing down requirement to perform the fast fall but I did want to leave this in and let you see it. So if you need to test, you can use a log like this in this scenario, and you'll know that you are past the apex of your jump. I'm going to remove it. So to quickly go through this, we have if get character movement parentheses, and then grab the velocity variable off of that dot Z, make sure it's less than 0.0 F and is pressing down is true. The player has to be pressing down. At this point, we want to change the gravity scale of the character to our fast fall scale. So we want to get the character movement, get the gravity scale variable, and set it equal to the fast fall scale. Once we've done that, our fast fall should work, but there are a few things we want to set up in the character blueprint to make sure that it works to our liking. All right, the editor is back open, so I can go into my characters, and you can go into the base character if you want to change it across the board, or you can go into your specific characters like the mutant BP. And we can play around with our two settings. So we have Ken Fast Fall and Fast Fall Scale. You saw what it looked like at the start of this episode, so let's see what it looks like if I change it to double the current Fast Fall Scale. And now, this is a normal jump. This is with the Fast Fall, so that's way faster. So you can change that and you can change it per character as well. 
I'm going to set it back to the five. And then you can also disable fast fall altogether on a character. Come into the game. No matter what buttons I'm pressing, I can't perform a fast fall at all. Thank you guys so much for 200 episodes of this amazing series. I am so incredibly grateful for all the love and support. And I'm so glad you guys are still enjoying it after all this time. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please subscribe. And please consider checking out the Patreon and YouTube membership for more content and extra benefits. If you had any trouble while you were watching this episode, feel free to join the Discord community. It's completely free and I would be happy to help you out. Anyway, guys, that's all I got. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.